when it comes to food and beverage, I think what's interesting is when you actually take an event into a different market that, that you don't normally plan in. Uh-huh. Um, so uh, whether it's regionally in the U.S. or internationally. Right. Because if, especially if you're going internationally, you almost have to trust the hotel or the convention center or your venue on advising you of what's going to work in their city. Yeah. Um, for example, I was in Mexico one time and we're at a very popular hotel and I was ordering lunch, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm thinking the chicken and the starch and the vegetables. And the, the hotel said, no, 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 that won't work with our people, our attendees. Even though they're my customers, they were still native to Mexico. Mm-hmm. And they said, that won't work. You need to order this. And I forget what it was called, but I, I, I said, sure, why not? So I get there, and we have this meal, and it's basically just a big plate of meat. That's all it was. <laughs> it's a big plate of beef. <laughs> Nothing nice. else involved. Awesome. No no side vegetable or rice or yeah. anything. Just meat. Yeah. It was really good meat. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really good, and everybody loved it. Yeah. And so I had to trust, you know, what would work right for that audience. Yeah. Okay. So what, what I think is really neat about where food is going now lately, or what I've seen lately, is action stations. And I know we've had action oh, yeah. stations forever, like the potato bar and the pasta station are probably right. the two most seen. Uh, but now you're seeing a little bit more creative. You're seeing like the macaroni and cheese, build your own mac and cheese. With- Do, have you seen it in like the, the giant wheel of yeah. cheese where they're uh, like mixing it around, the thing is melting as it goes? And different kinds of cheeses. It's just so good. You know, and... And I think that's kind of fun. I think people are having more fun with the variety. Ice cream sundae stations or something. Yeah, make your own donut kind of. Decorate your own donut. Yes, yes. absolutely. Decorate your own donut. I love absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, so those are fun. Yeah, no, I love that. Yeah, for example, one year uh, we had this event in a major city. And um, a few weeks prior to the major event, um, an executive came, it was actually the CEO came and said, instead of this program, I want to you know, just change that completely, basically cancel an element of the conference and introduce a whole new element within a few weeks. Where, and of course it was an element where we had to have the attendees engaged in it. And it needed some promotion around the element to make it successful. Mm-hmm. And this was just a few weeks prior. And, and Internally, we had a lot of discussions on why we shouldn't make that last-minute change, but unfortunately, he uh, he was driven and committed to make yeah. that change. So we did, and of course, what happened during the conference is it fell. It fell because we weren't given that adequate time to to build up the promotion around it, to make sure we had the pre-engagement around it, and so it failed. So. Um, not the whole conference, just that one piece <laughs> failed. Element. Yeah, that element, which we know we <laughs> always have sometimes. Um, so what we learned, you know, moving forward for the following year is we just established a better timeline. Again, it goes back to communicating clearly in advance of saying, um, this is the time period that where we can look at these major elements and, and this is a time period where you can give us feedback and where we're going to accept feedback and we're going to look at how we change or to find something new. Mm-hmm. But then when we reach this time period, that's when we have to continue with those with the elements that are in place. Right. Um, and, and the team and, and him individually, as well as, as the full executive team, was fully on board and understood why you had to have that, that timeline and structure in place, and it worked well. Yeah, and I think the only thing I'd want to add to that is that being so upfront with those communications, especially with the C-levels, they really respect that. They respect mm-hmm. that level of organization. They respect that kind of management. So it's great to, to lead with that early on. This is the time frame. We're going to stick to it. And they're going to really respect, um, and I'm sure they'll, they'll slip, but they'll certainly respect those employees. Yep. Good. Well, thanks for joining us for episode number two. Remember, you can send us your questions. Yeah, on Twitter with hashtag AskAplannerShow. See you next time.